Hello YouTube, welcome back. It's me, Logan Albright, with another book review for you. And this week I'm talking about Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. Now I first became aware of this book in uh, when I watched the movie version. There was a television movie produced by the BBC in 1995 that I had seen a long time ago and really enjoyed. And it's actually got a really good cast in it. It's got Ian McKellen and Kate Beckinsale and a lot of really famous people in it. Rufus Sewell, quite a good little film. I, I recommend it. But I knew about that. I wasn't actually sure that it was based on a book, but um, I, my sister was told me she was reading it, and I recognized it from the movie, and so I thought I'd read it too. And it's quite a fun little read. Um, it was written by Stella Gibbons, published in 1932, and the first thing you need to know about it is that it's a parody. It's a parody of those sort of, of several different things, actually. It's a parody of these uh, novels that were fashionable at the time that are kind of about rural life, about people from the city going out to the country and living there and kind of uh, the difference between those two things. And there was a lot of gloom and there was a lot of, you know, gothicness about them. And there's also definitely a parody of the gothic novel in here as well. You really see that. And there's a lot of name checks of specific authors that the protagonist talks about. And she talks about the Bronte sisters and she talks about Jane Austen and she talks about Edgar Allan Poe and she talks about D.H. Lawrence. There's a little bit of D.H. Lawrence parody in here as well. And so there's all those kind of like contemporary or slightly earlier influences that were um, definitely feed into the story of this novel. And so you have to kind of bear in mind that it is meant to be parodic when you go into it. And I'll explain why in a minute, but first let me get to a little bit of the plot. The plot of the story is that there's a young girl, 19 year old named uh, Flora Post, whose parents have died tragically. And rather than work for a living, she decides to mooch off of her relatives. And so she sends out a bunch of inquiries and finds uh, a willing family who is willing to take her in at Cold Comfort Farm in Sussex, England. And she goes there and it's a very dour and grim place and everybody's weird and everybody speaks in dialect and everybody's very mournful and the cows have names like um, pointless and feckless and things like that. And it's, it's in a, a county of Howling or a town of Howling in uh, Sussex, which is um, you know, a great name for a town in southern England. I think it's fantastic. Not a real place name, obviously, but she's, you know, that that's the kind of atmosphere she's trying to evoke. And it's it's ruled over by this matriarch um, who's the Aunt Ada Doom. And she's, you know, the the mysterious old woman who locks herself in the attic and never comes down and is very creepy. And she always is saying that she saw something nasty in the woodshed when she was a child and she won't elaborate on what that is. And so it's a house full of mystery and doom. And they say that there's a curse on the farm and um, everything is just kind of rotting and, and bad. And Flora Post goes in there with this kind of chipper Jane Austen heroine type attitude saying, I'm going to clear up all this business. I'm going to tidy everything up. I'm going to make everybody happy. I'm going to fix everybody's uh, problems. And that's sort of the plot of the, the book. Now, what I found striking about this is that in any other scenario, I would find this protagonist very unlikable. I have a hard time with busybodies, with people who are uh, manipulative and meddling and won't leave people be. And the idea of this 19-year-old city girl from London coming down and saying, all you stupid farmers don't know what you're doing. Let me teach you how to live and solve all your problems for you and uh, you know, meddle in your affairs. I would find that very off-putting in a normal novel. It would really bother me. <laughs> I would hate that protagonist. But because this is done tongue-in-cheek and because it is kind of making fun of these sorts of novels, the author gets away with it. And I think that's really cool. And it's a really interesting lesson on kind of like the fine line you have to walk sometimes um, and the difference between something that's really fun and charming and likable and something that's really off-putting and unlikable. And it's it's not much of a difference because this could have very, very easily gone in the other direction. But I actually end up really liking the protagonist and she's handled in a skillful and fun enough way that you don't really mind the fact that she would be pretty insufferable in real life. Um, the main thing I like about this book is that it is just chock full of the kind of atmosphere and tropes that I appreciate and like. It's this, you know, I, I love this kind of dark, dismal, rainy England um, full of this foreboding and secrets and mystery. I like, I think it's fantastic. And all that's done in a very heightened way to kind of mock the genre. Um, but it's so, it's so appealing to me and it's so likable. And you just, I love the, the, all the characters are written in dialect. You get this kind of West Country dialect where they all talk, or I don't want to displease the maid. Oh, come on. I won't do anything against it. 
and there's this religious fundamentalism where the uh, the father is always saying, you know, oh, you're going all going to burn you sinners and that sort of thing. <laughs> I I love that kind of thing. It makes me so happy. You can tell I'm just laughing at it, just thinking about it. Um, so it's a lot of fun. It's quite a short novel. This is a horrible public domain print on demand edition that I was able to get for some reason I couldn't find like a good real edition on Amazon. This was the cheapest one and the only one really that I could get my hands on, but, uh, it's pretty short. It's like 190 pages in this edition. Uh, I got through it within a few days, really enjoyable. Um, lots of little tying up of loose ends. And this is the part where I want to, uh, kind of do a few spoilers. So if you want to read it and you haven't seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, you might want to turn off here, but, uh, one of the things that I find funny about it, and again, this is an example where, you know, it could easily go the other way. It could easily be frustrating and upsetting to the reader. But there's all these little mysteries that are laid in. Um, the the aunt who is saying, I saw something nasty in the woodshed. You keep thinking that's going to pay off. And then the uh, the mother who says, you know, that she invites Flora to her farm and says, you, my my man did your your father a great wrong in the past. And you're entitled to your rights and you'll come live with us and we'll atone for the wrong that was done to your father. And so, like, you think that this is a mystery that's going to be cleared up over the course of the novel. None of it's cleared up. It's all left hanging. At the end, she's like, oh, what, you know, what happened with the with my father? And they're like, I don't know. It doesn't matter. And they say, well, who, what did she see nasty in the woods that doesn't matter? They, just, they, don't, they don't resolve any of it. And that would be really frustrating in a normal novel. But because this is done kind of humorously and tongue-in-cheek, it, it's it's funny and it's kind of pulled off and they set up all these things that are would be taken very seriously in a melodrama in a serious melodrama type novel like the type she's making fun of but they don't take them seriously at all they just say ah it's, you know the author just says these things aren't important forget about them and I think that's really funny and there's a lot of like uh, mocking of the type of kind of purple prose that is written in those type of novels and it's it's done subtly like it's done close enough to the way that those novels are written that you might not pick up on the fact that it's parody at first but uh you know it's it's done slightly exaggerated and it's really fun and a lot i I like that kind of writing anyway i kind of find that florid english writing uh enjoyable and so kind of taking it to an extreme for comic effect i find really enjoyable as well i really like that one slightly odd aspect of the novel is that it's set in an indeterminate future and that really threw me off at first because you don't get that in the movie at all but there's like this is set in like i don't know maybe the 50s or 60s um even though it was written in the 30s and um so there's there's weird things that are thrown in like there's telephones that have um like video phone capability on them and I was so confused when I was reading it because it was like they were talking about seeing each other through the view screen of the telephone. And I was like, wait, doesn't this take place in the 30s? But it's it's got a little bit of that futurism and that kind of science fiction aspect to it. But it's very subtle and it's not dwelt upon in any way. It's just kind of laid in there. And I find that really strange. And I'm kind of glad they didn't try to adapt that part when they did the movie. I think that it's better to just keep it period and keep it in the 1930s. Because you have this uh, in the movie, Kate Beckinsale is, is playing the lead. And she's got this nice 30s bob haircut. And you really the fashion is is very uh, uh, period appropriate. And you kind of get get that sense of the time period, the music and everything. And I really like that. So the futurism thing is something that didn't really work for me in the book, but maybe it's because I saw the movie first. It was also just confusing because I wasn't expecting that going in. It feels like an old fashioned Gothic kind of novel. I suppose that's about all I have to say about Cold Comfort Farm. It's not that deep of a novel. It's just a quick, fun read. But if you like, you know, those type of pucky heroine novels, the ones that are like the Jane Austens or the Charlotte Brontes or the Emily Bronte type novels, you might enjoy this. If you like Gothic literature, you'll enjoy this. If you like kind of rural literature or English literature, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, it's not like outrageously funny. It's not really laugh out loud funny most of the time, but it's witty and it's clever and it's um, it's got enough humor in it that I found it really enjoyable. It's a quick read, as I said, so you know, give it a shot. And I definitely do recommend the film. I think the film version is really good. Stephen Fry is in it as well. I forgot to mention that. I love Stephen Fry. Lots of good people in that film. And so, um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I'm glad I read it. Um, I don't think the author, the author wrote a sequel or a prequel to it or both perhaps, but that's about it. It's, she's not well known for other writing that she's done, but I think this is well worth the read. I really enjoyed it and I'm glad that I picked it up. So that's my review of Cold Comfort Farm. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've read it and what you thought of it. I'd love to get your, your views. And I'll be back again next week, just as soon as I can, with another book review for you. I'm always reading. I'm always trying to come up with new books to review for you guys. So I'll be back with another one as soon as possible. And until next time, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you later.